Do Catholics worship the Blessed Virgin Mary? Hi, I am Ryan Zell. Let's explore this fraudulent claim. Protestants have been disseminators of fake news for 500 years. It began with Luther, who believed that lying for the Lord is justified and one commits no harm when doing so. Some Protestant pastors, particularly those in the independent fundamentalist, Baptist, Pentecostal, Seventh-day Adventist sects, and non-denominational pastors claim that Catholics worship the Blessed Virgin Mary. Some do so knowingly misrepresenting Catholic beliefs, while others who follow these gleeful demagogues believe the falsehoods because they do not know any better and put their faith and trust in these charlatans and propagandists. When the Protestants who seek to spread falsehoods against Catholicism are confronted with their lie, they will jump onto another topic, hoping another new lie would better provide leverage in getting a Catholic to leave the true church and follow the Protestant lie. For the Protestant, the end justifies the means. So it would not be surprising that Protestants choose to lie if it means it would gain them a convert to their heretical denomination, sect, or cult. Catholics, on the other hand, have always attempted to represent the Protestant beliefs as accurately as possible. This is very evident in the writings of St. Robert Cardinal Bellarmine, which is evident in his controversies of the Christian faith. But do Catholics truly worship the Blessed Virgin Mary, or is it another lie concocted by the Protestants? The Blessed Virgin Mary is the Mother of God. She is the Theotokos, the God-bearer. Since Christ's two natures are invisible, being both God and man upon the Incarnation, she is not just the mother of Christ, but more accurately, the mother of God, by being the mother of God the Son. She provides God in the person of the Son, his humanity, flesh, and blood. She alone among all women was destined for this great honor by the Almighty. Catholics merely recognize the high honor already bestowed upon her by the Almighty by acknowledging what the Almighty has already done. Catholics give her the high honor rightly due to her, which the cardinal virtue of justice demands of us. The virtue of justice demands that we give her particularly great honor for her particular participation in the divine plan of salvation through which humanity comes to redemption. Without her assent to the divine plan of salvation, it would have been thwarted. It is by her fiat in the compliance to the divine plan of salvation that all humanity can have the hope of redemption and eternal life. As the mother of the Savior, she shares in the sorrow of the passion, death, and the joy of the resurrection of her son, the Christ. She united her own sorrow and suffering with that of her son in a special manner. Her own suffering and sorrow over her own son's passion and death was directly brought on by the sins of mankind. While her son's passion, death, and resurrection is infinitely propitious, her participation is nevertheless complementary. Indeed, all Catholics are called, like the Virgin Mary, to unite our suffering with that of Christ, so as to give meaning to our own suffering through which grace can be manifest and come to understand the salvific meaning of suffering. English is a continuously evolving language, which morphed from the German West Saxon form of Old English into Middle English as it came under the influence of the French, evolving into early modern English of Shakespeare and into contemporary English of today. The meaning of words has changed over time as words have shed their historic meanings and taken on new meanings. This is the case with the word worship. Right through into the glorious revolution and into the reign of George III, Worship held a historic meaning, one of the honor given to a person in recognition of their merit, rank, and social standing. Even to this day, Lord Mayors of cities in the United Kingdom are addressed in the style of your worship. In the past, mayors of towns, magistrates, and justices of the peace were addressed in this style. No one is worshiping these individuals in the modern American sense of the word. All it meant was that the individual was worthy of honor. The United States, which rejected the monarchical system and settled for a more egalitarian system of government, rejecting the honorific styles and the pomp and pageantry which is associated with such monarchical systems of government. The people of the United States are so disassociated from their historic past that they lack the sense of history past the American Revolution, which gives rise to what is nevertheless a great nation. 
In the United States, so influenced by the Second Great Awakening and the austerity of Protestantism, combined with the pietism associated with the movement and the word worship, took on a new meaning, being without of adoration given to God. In the ancient past, this sense of the modern meaning of the word worship was conveyed by the word adoration. While Latin is an extremely precise language, English until the modern era was not. Latin provides distinctions while the English language does not do as much. Latria is the adoration given to a god who is in the modern American sense worshipped. Dulia is the honor given to persons, a dignity due to their office or birth. Hyperdulia is the great honor given to great persons, such as the victorious generals or the emperor. Each of these Latin terms were translated as worship in English until the Victorian period. It is certain that English Catholics did indeed worship the saints, including the Blessed Virgin, but did so in the same sense as the English, Scottish, Welsh, and Irish Protestants, who worshipped town officials, officers of the court, and justices of the peace. That is true if we hold to the same definition of the word worship when it was used in both instances. However, Catholic-hating American Protestants are given to lying and equivocation and attempt to use the word in an alternative sense of the word to promote their invented culminy for the purpose of associating Catholicism with idolatry. Their goal is neither the truth nor understanding, but spreading falsehood and the promotion of hate against Catholicism. Due to their hatred of Catholicism, no guile is spared to make their assertion that Catholicism is not Christian. Catholicism is not a 16th century invention, as is the case of every Protestant denomination, sect, or cult. It did not come to be in the era of modern English. But when Catholics spoke languages of antiquity, Aramaic, Hebrew, Greek, and Latin, Catholicism exited long before the English people spoke Old English and later Middle English. When the first Protestants showed up on the scene in England, the English people were already speaking early modern English contemporary to the 16th century. Yet even during this time and for the next 300 years, Protestants of England continued to give worship of men deemed worthy of rank or honor or social standing. If one uses the sense of the word worship contemporary to that time, a better question for Protestants to ask to avoid ambiguous terminology is, do Catholics give adoration to the Blessed Virgin or to the saints? The word adoration is the latria form of the worship due to God alone. The answer is no, Catholics do not adore the Blessed Virgin. Catholics do not give adoration to the Blessed Virgin nor to the saints. Catholics give adoration to persons of the Blessed Trinity exclusively. Catholics do not worship the Blessed Virgin as the word worship is understood in modern America, whereas the word is understood to be synonymous with adoration. In this sense of the word, Catholics do not worship the Blessed Virgin Mary. Catholics, however, do give the Blessed Virgin a place of high honor as she was given this high honor by God for our salvation. Christ is the only son who preexisted his mother. He made his mother the most perfect created being. As the Ark of the New Covenant, she held the Word made flesh, not the Word written in stone. Catholics merely acknowledge and affirm the high honor God bestowed on the Blessed Virgin Mary. The Catholic Church teaches that adoration is the first act of the virtue of religion. To adore God is to acknowledge Him as God, as the Creator and Savior, the Lord and Master of everything that exists, as infinite and merciful love. To adore God is to acknowledge in respect and absolute submission the nothingness of the creature who would not exist but for God. To adore God is to praise and exalt him and to humble oneself, as Mary did in the Magnificat, confessing with gratitude that he has done great things and holy is his name. The worship of the one God sets man free from turning in and on himself, from the slavery of sin and the idolatry of the world. The Catechism 2096 and 2097. Is praying to someone a form of adoration? Prayer is an entreaty or supplication directed at the person of God. Prayers of relief are submitted in civil procedures, requesting relief in the manner of, of compensatory remedies or damages. 
In the theological sense, prayer is communication with the divine and his angels and his saints. Prayer is the raising of one's mind and heart to God or the requesting of good things from God. This can be accomplished by praying directly to the divine or through an advocate or mediator, a fellow Christian, the saints in heaven, or the angels. A Christian who asks another Christian to pray on his or her behalf has requested the other Christian to advocate on his or her behalf before God. Protestants frequently request that their fellow Protestants pray to God on their behalf. In this manner, any right-thinking Protestant must have some inkling that praying to at least another Christian to intercede with the divine on their behalf might be permitted as it appears that Protestants request other Protestants to pray for them frequently. It would be exceedingly hypocritical for Protestants to claim that Catholics commit idolatry or practice paganism when praying to the saints for their intercession while the Protestants pray on the behalf of each other without batting an eye. Prayer can be directed towards God, his angels and saints, or to persons on this earth, and can take several principal forms, including petitions, thanksgiving, confession, praise, honor, and adoration. Requesting that someone intercede on your behalf is in a manner giving them honor, and is indeed a form of worship when one understands worship to showing deference or giving honor to a person. No one would usually bother asking a dishonorable retrobate to pray on their behalf. In this sense, asking someone to pray on your behalf can be construed as a form of worship in the archaic American sense of the word. Catholics and Jews have no qualms praying to the Almighty, angels and saints, but reserve adoration for the divine alone, to the exclusion of all other beings. Neither Catholics, the Orthodox, nor the Jew give adoration to anyone but the Almighty. But each prays to saints asking for their intercession with the Almighty. Is praying to a saint a form of idolatry? Well, some Protestants believe that praying to the saints is a form of idolatry. According to their rather asinine reasoning, those who have passed on cannot hear prayers of those on earth. They are deaf, dumb, and blind wherever they are. The earliest Protestant reformers could not even figure out where those who passed away were. These reformers picked up on a then recently condemned heresy of psychopanichaeism and enshrined it in their theology. According to this doctrine, taken from the musings of Abu Walid Muhammad ibn Rushdi, the soul goes to sleep upon death. Yet there are some Protestants who claim that praying to the saints is a form of necromancy in the same manner as that occurs when the witch of Endor summons the spirit of Samuel. Catholic and Orthodox teach as doctrine the immortality of the human soul. The saints are alive in heaven, are far from being deaf, dumb, and blind, as the early Protestant reformers would have Christians believe. The saints pray on behalf of those here on earth and are fully aware of prayers of the faithful and the goings-on here on earth. Those who are in heaven can see far more clearly and reason more perfectly than while they were here on earth. Catholics do not conjure the spirits of the saints for the purpose of prognosticating the future, as was the case with Saul and the medium of Endor. But Catholics pray to the saints who are in heaven to intercede with the Almighty on their behalf or to thank them for their intercession of graces provided through the intercession of the saints in heaven. Is venerating a saint a form of idolatry? The veneration of the saints has roots in Judaic belief and custom and continues unchanged for the most part in Catholicism. The veneration is defined as the respect inspired by the dignity, wisdom, dedication, or the talent of a person. The saints have performed extraordinary virtuous acts with readiness and over a period of time. They exercised moral virtues with ease, while faith, hope, and charity are practiced to an imminent degree. Saints have exhibited heroic virtue during their lifetime or have died as martyrs for the Catholic faith. The saints deserve our veneration because of what they accomplished by participating with the divine grace. Veneration is the act of honoring the person as it pertains to Catholicism, the honoring of God, his angels and saints. Great honor is given to the Blessed Virgin while the greatest honor is reserved for the divine alone. The saints deserve our veneration as they deserve honor and respect. God has honored his saints and therefore we are likewise should honor the saints. As Catholics, Eastern Orthodox, and Oriental Orthodox, 
We profess our belief in the communion of saints, which is a creedal belief which Christians must profess to be considered a Christian. There can be no communion with the saints if one cannot communicate with the saints. When a Protestant has shown honor and respect to his parents, does the Protestant engage in a form of idolatry? No Catholic would accuse a Protestant of idolatry for showing honor or respect for their parents. But should a Catholic do so, well, that would be idolatry, according to some Protestants, which underscores the duplicity of such Protestants. Many cultures show profound respect to parents, elders, and officials by deep bowing, kissing feet, or even prostration, which can be construed by Americans as worship in the modern American sense. Indeed, in Protestant Europe, this was very much the case when kings and queens reigned. Were Protestants practicing idolatry when bowing and kneeling before the kings and queens of Europe? No Catholic would accuse a Protestant of doing so. Is Mary really a pagan goddess? Anti-Catholic Protestant bigots, many of whom are uneducated and lack the ability to think critically, claim that Mary, whom Catholics supposedly worship, is in reality none other than Isis or Ishtar or Asher or any other pagan goddess that they can dredge up from ancient antiquity. However, the reality could not be so straightforward as who Catholics claim the Blessed Virgin Mary to be as Occam's razor never shaved their beards. It is always some convoluted nonsense, which makes the most sense to these provocators of every mendacity which could be imagined. Thus, the far-fetched nonsense makes more sense to these demagogues than which is most reasonable and straightforward. It is hard to debunk each of the numerous variations of such claims due to the sheer number of variations of these provocators can imagine in their minds. These retrobates made such assertions without actual evidence. Their own fictitious claim is the only evidence that they need to believe such abject silliness. The imagery of the Madonna with child has been one of the most salient imagery used by Christians throughout the ages. However, to these mendicious Protestants, such imagery depicts Isis and Horus in reality, not the Christ child and his mother as it is so obviously depicts. Since there are images of Isis holding Horus depicted in Egyptian art, when Catholics depict the Blessed Virgin and the Christ child, it must not really be the Blessed Virgin and the Christ child, but Isis and Horus instead. When militant atheists pick up on such Protestant idiocy, they claim that Christianity itself as a whole has these beliefs, so is nothing more than a continued Egyptian myth. This is a case of the imbecilic Protestants cutting off their collective head to spite their nose. The most vile retrogrades, usually those of the Seventh-day Adventist movement and those who come out of that cult, tend to be among the most ardent anti-Catholic bigots, as is the case with Jack Chick, whose mendacious tracts are distributed by independent fundamentalist Baptists. While most independent fundamentalist Baptists do not consider Seventh-day Adventists to be Christians, they nevertheless latch on to the falsehood spread by this cult to use as a cudgel to be used against Catholicism. It is apparent to those with a scintilla of common sense that the Blessed Virgin Mary, who is the Mother of God, is none other than the same Blessed Virgin Mary, who is the Mother of God, and not Isis, the Mother of Horus, which is apparent to most persons of goodwill. The more preposterous the claim made, the more likely these secretarian extremist halfwits are to believe the nonsense spewed for their consumption. In conclusion, Catholics do not worship the Blessed Virgin and the saints. However, we honor them and pray to them, asking for their intercession and assistance. We do not believe that the saints are dead, but more fully alive with God in a special way. Therefore, we do not pray to the dead, but those alive with God in heaven. Among the saints in heaven, the Blessed Virgin has a special status being the mother of God by the way of giving the Son, our Christ, his human nature, which he assumed and redeemed for our sake. Without her submission to the divine will, the divine plan of salvation would have been stymied. She deserves great honor for her ascent to the divine will. Catholics worship God alone to the exclusion of all other things. This worship given to God alone is adoration. The sacred liturgy is the most perfect form of adoration which can be given to God. 
Even though many of the disingenuous Protestants know full well that Catholics do not worship the Blessed Virgin Mary, Protestants nevertheless continue their great calumny against Catholicism with their mendacious claim that Catholics worship the Blessed Virgin. Protestants have no compunctions lying for their heresies and engage in the same deception and outright lying as the Muslims do, who use techniques such as takia, morana, kitman, and toria, proselytizing for their god Allah. These duplicitous provocators are quick to accuse the Mohammedan of takia yet doing the very same thing in the furtherance of his or her Protestant heresy. The Protestants who have disseminated such culminy have without much doubt have been repeatedly corrected by Catholics. Yet the repetition of such idiocy by particularly those in the independent fundamentalist Baptist, Seventh-day Adventist, Pentecostal, and even some non-denominational congregations continues. After being corrected by a Catholic, they will nevertheless repeat the culminy elsewhere. The truth falls victim to the Protestant perfidy. Protestantism is Satan's invention to keep Protestants away from the true faith, which is the Catholic faith. It should be noted that most Protestants do not make such assertions, as whether these Protestants agree with these ancient Catholic beliefs and practices or not, have an understanding which is not as steeped in anti-Catholic bigotry as the neo-know-nothings. Furthermore, Southern Baptists, and for that matter most Baptists, while not agreeing with Catholic beliefs and practices, do not make such culminous assertions. Rather, it is a minority of acrimonious peddlers of religious bigotry who make such inane assertions. Please consider subscribing to this channel and engage in the conversation by commenting.